Okay, we are piling the episodes up uh, from iMark in Australia. Tons of fun. We are covering a lot of ground in the mining industry on this uh, leg of the heavy industry world tour, um, which is brought to you by Savannah Equipment. A huge, huge thank you to them for helping us get all over the world. You know, we started in Vancouver and then out to out east to Toronto. Then we went um, <laughs> to South Africa. Now we're in Australia. And then we're going in February 6th to 9th. We're going to be back in South Africa at Indaba. And then the Crownsman Show is going to Florida, the Power Gen, uh, February 21st to 23rd. So if you want to be on any of those shows, let us know if you're going to be attending, and we'll get you on an episode. Today we have um, a very interesting company, uh, Safe Gauge. And we're going to have their managing director and founder, Luke Dawson, on the show. They're doing some very... Uh, they're keeping us safer <laughs> and giving us data while they're doing it. So great topic. Uh, Luke, welcome to the show. Great to have you on. Hi, Jared. Hi. Um, so, I mean, I took it as a safety, uh, as a safety thing. Uh, and I, I'm, maybe I'm a little bit biased. I, my grandfather, um, he, he passed away years, way, way before I was ever thought up um, from equipment. Unsafely being operated, uh, so this this episode yeah. means something to me a little different than, than to some people. Um, talk, yeah. can you talk a little bit about uh, who Safe Gauge is and, and why you founded it? Yeah, absolutely. Um, thanks for having me here, uh, Jared. It's it's really nice to be speaking to you. It's great to be here at IMARC here in Australia, um, and it's a it's an awesome awesome conference and opportunity to to share a bit about Safe Gauge and to get this message out and keep people safe. Um, in different areas of, of the mining industries is very important to myself. I'm, I'm a plant mechanic by trade, so I um, actually spend a lot of time on the tools, fixing machinery, um, maintaining and, and uh, diagnosing hydraulic faults and different things. And um, just the, the general, um, the nature of human and machinery interaction and, and technicians working on machines uh, whilst they're being operated live, uh, being under machines, whilst they're um, you know, under pressure and the, the systems are operating, um, it, it creates a lot of risk. And um, what SafeGauge is all about is removing technicians from those risk and dangerous situations and areas of the machines and um, give them the ability to, to do the, the normal testing and the um, standard testing they've always done, but in a much safer way uh, by doing it remotely. So. Uh, in, in, a, in a nutshell, that's, that's what we're our core focus, and uh, we're developing some very exciting new technology to uh, to add to that range as well. Yeah, and that's what I love about what you're doing is that there's just two parts to it. I want to just I want to stay on the safety aspect a little bit. I'm just sort of I guess I want to set up the industry before you came along, because if you've worked on machinery, I have a little bit. Um, and and I've had a couple close calls myself. It's I don't think if you've worked on until you've worked on it, even working around it's not the same. Until you've worked on it, you can't understand just how there is absolutely no mercy. Like if something gives when it's heavy machinery, you literally feel like an ant. There is it's just the amount of yeah. pressure, the amount of power behind it. It's it's unlike anything. Yeah. Um, and, and you've actually yeah. had a chance to work in that environment. Yeah. And a good example of that is uh, an invisible risk when you're testing hydraulics is the pressure uh, mm -hmm. that traditionally you'd be holding in your hand, holding a pressurized gauge. Um, some of these machines operate up to 600 bar, which is um, 8,700 psi, um, extremely high pressures. And um, it's not always noticed that that pressure is being held in uh, that your hand. And, and if something goes wrong, uh, it could be uh, catastrophic. At Corporate Traveler, their seamless combination of expert service and innovative booking tech means you have what you need when you need it. Mining companies need experienced agents who know how to get you to far-to-reach destinations with ease, who understand rotational crew travel, chartering, and so much more. And with an average tenure of eight years, their agents are the best in the biz and are experts at managing all your mining travel needs. Have an emergency? They've got your back 24-7, anywhere, on any device. Don't get stuck with complicated and rigid travel options. Get it done with Corporate Traveler. Visit them at corptraveler.com. 
Cleario Custom creates 3D and immersive experiences, presentations, and apps. Use this amazing technology to promote projects or products, communicate plans and outcomes to stakeholders, train your employees and customers, hold virtual meetings around the world with your project's data. For infrastructure, environmental, and industrial projects, Cleario's expertise converts your spatial data into holographic 3D scenes, or full applications that tell your story in a compelling and intuitive way. It's time to join the metaverse for the real world. Learn more at Cleario.studio. In business since 1960, DICORP is a leading private manufacturer and distributor of specialty chemicals, equipment, parts, and accessories serving the energy and mining industries. DICORP manufactures and distributes a full line of drillers' edge coring rods, core retrieval systems, and diamond tooling for diamond core drilling worldwide. They also manufacture and sell high-quality earth pro drilling fluids and additives for the mineral exploration and energy industries. For more, you can visit them at die-corp.com or contact their head office at 780-440-4923. So what made you what made you uh, start to develop this? How did it, how did the idea come about? Uh, so being a technician myself, I worked for the cat dealer here. I did my time with uh, West Track, which is the Australian uh, leading caterpillar dealer uh, here in New South Wales. And uh, during the, the testing, the diagnosing, uh, commissioning of, of heavy plants, um, you know, and, and understanding and, and feeling the risk associated with a lot of those tasks. Um, you know, I, I felt there needed to be a, a, a solution to, to reduce that risk, remove technicians from those dangerous areas, um, in which, you know, fortunately, it's been well adopted by many mining companies, many OEMs here in Australia uh, originally, but now we're, we're branching off overseas as well. And, wow. Um, and, and sharing that technology to a larger scale as well, which is uh, extremely exciting. And um, just it, it feels uh, like we're doing a, a really good cause mm. um, by, by offering this solution and allowing technicians, um, as I was and the people that I work with, to, to do the job much safer. I, I, I'm just sort of fascinated by um, by this as well. Is what was day one like? Like, wh- where did you where do you go to develop like a, the product or you know everything yeah. that we do is all plugged into something else that someone else has developed and then we've yeah. leveraged off it. Um, yeah. You've developed something new, <laughs> so wh- where do you, where do you go? How do you even start that? Yeah. Well, to be honest, at the start I didn't have a clue. <laughs> I didn't know where where to go. I didn't know what to do. I had an idea, and um, that idea was. Purely the the first product of the pressure testing system through Bluetooth. So um, no electronic background, no business background. I was wow. a mechanic on the tools, uh, working night shifts on, in a mine site, coal mine uh, local, um, local local to home. So I had an idea, and I reached out to about 15 different electronic um, designing firms. Eventually, I uh, came across a very talented engineer. His name's Steve Chick. He was based in Sydney, which is a couple of hours uh, south of where I was. And um, I got a bunch of you know quotes and talked to a bunch of people about the idea and um, how they could potentially help. I ended up uh, meeting with Steve, and he liked the idea that much uh, that he he committed to to design the first product. Um, I ended up selling. I believed in it that much that I I sold my house. So I um, you know went part time off the tools and. I invested a lot of time and pretty much Whoa. everything uh, in, into this idea. And um, fortunately, uh, Steve did a great job designing the product. And, and fortunately, that's, that you know, created a, a great fundamental to build a business from. Um, wow. Yeah. Did you, did you, uh, I mean, I'm in Vancouver. So when someone says selling a house, that can mean a lot of things. Did you, did you sell on the high part of the market? <laughs> I sold uh, just before COVID, actually. So okay. I, uh, I'm still I'm kidding. kicking myself over that a little bit. But yeah. in saying that, no, the business wouldn't be where it is today yeah. without that investment. So um, I think, to be honest, it's paid dividends. Yeah. Uh, and and uh, it's it's the sacrifice that I took to to invest everything I had into into this great solution. What was the most challenging period? I mean, we're going to get into the technology, which is just, I was watching your videos and how it's set up and the usability. There's 
something I love yeah. that you did is you put a camera on you and you were testing it and you're just there walking through it. There's yeah. no it, there's no gimmicks yeah. on it. It's just this is how it works. And a lot of yeah. technologies that I've interviewed can't do it because it's too complicated to do it. So that I appreciate yeah. that. Before we jump into it, I just kind of want to stay on this because it's, I mean, that is a huge commitment to develop something like this. What was the most challenging part for you in that process? I guess the the, the rapid increase of learning everything that needs to be done to you know, launch a product, commercialize a product um, once the design was finished uh, and then build a, a team um, and source the capital needed to, to grow the company. Um, it's all been a big challenge through COVID. You know, we sold our first product uh, mid-2020, the start of COVID. Uh, it was very challenging to get in front of the customers to talk to them and to educate them on you know, this new idea, this new product and um, these new solutions. Um, so it's been a challenge from, from day one, but fortunately there's a, been a great fit for the product and mm. there's been great uptake of um, of the customers that are using it as well. So. Yeah, well, what I was going to say is the demand must just be, I mean, I took, I looked at it for two minutes. I went, How? it's almost one of those products that you see it and you're like, wait a second, people were doing this handheld before that's, we were putting people in those yeah. machines doing that. That's yeah. it's insanely dangerous. So the, how quickly from the time you sort of first had those prototypes, did you have people interested? So I put, we put together a short video. Um, it went for about, I think, three minutes or something uh, on social media. And I was on the first prototype. We, we built one prototype, made a video, put it on Facebook, paid $30 for a Facebook ad. We got the attention of Caterpillar from America. Um, we got wow. the attention of BHP, Rio Tinto, Fortescue wow. Metals, a lot of the key miners here. Uh, just from that one post on the, on the first prototype. So Amazing. from that, we knew we had something real. Uh, we invested a, a lot into the first production run, and, and fortunately, we sold that first 50 kits before they were even built. So, wow. uh, yeah, very, very fortunate. Geograph is Australia's leading manufacturer of enhanced performance mining parts. Geograph designs and manufactures enhanced wear parts to suit major mining mach machinery from Caterpillar, Komatsu, Hitachi, Liebherr, and more. The Geograph Enhanced Performance range is designed to reduce downtime and operating costs for mine sites and off-site repairers by engineering wear parts to last longer. Geograph challenges you to expect more from yourself and your assets. Visit geograph.com.au for more information or click the link in the video description below. It's Canada's premier event for mining, metals, and materials professionals. The Canadian Institute of Mining, Metallurgy, and Petroleum will be hosting its annual convention and expo in May in the beautiful city of Montreal. The technical program will feature expertise from a wide range of leaders across industry sectors. Are you working on a project that others in the industry need to know about? Well, let them know. CIM is now seeking presentations on a variety of topics. You can visit them at convention.cim.org to learn more. Introducing the SolarSet Fold. The new foldable frame solar system brings power to your residential and commercial property and can be shipped worldwide. Like all SolarSet products, the SolarSet Fold comes turnkey, pre-assembled, and is easily transported and installed. Learn more about SolarSet Fold and their full line of amazing solar systems at SolarSet.com. What is the so so? What all the, is the product? Uh, I mean, I'm uh, I'm not a I'm not an expert in the machines themselves. So, what all is yeah. it? Um, when when you go on to and we can bring up some videos to sort of show some of the the machines. But what would be an yeah. example of of what you'd be coming in with a machine to do? Let's say like a haul truck uh, or something. Um, yep. So a, a good example: a, a transmission calibration. Um, there's, there's a transmission at the back of the machine. Underneath the tray, they, we call it the body, um, and there's a bunch of different pressure ports that you need to put traditional gauges on 
uh, to read those pressures of the clutch pack. So it's a standard, very common um, calibration and test performed on a dump truck, uh, Caterpillar in particular. And traditionally, there used to be someone having to operate the machine, uh, change the gears and, and complete that calibration uh, from the cab and then someone else on the ground underneath the machine um, or right next to one of the rear tyres reading those different pressures and, and, and doing that calibration. With our solution, you can put these wireless transducers on that same transmission. It can all be done from the safety of the cabin uh, with one with one person. So uh, that's a common common test uh, you know, example uh, used for, for our tooling. And uh, that's what a lot of our customers use, use it for. Safe Gauge is a game changer when it comes to testing hydraulic pressure on mobile plant machinery. Our patented wireless system works up to 50 metres away. No more test hoses, tangles or risk of fluid injection as workers stay clear of crush zones and the line of fire during live testing. Colour-coded sensors avoid confusion and are calibrated from 0 to 600 bar at an accuracy within 0.4% and are able to test up to four pressures instantaneously. The Safe Gauge touchscreen display allows the technician and operator to communicate in sight of one another. There really is no smarter or safer way of testing hydraulic systems. Work smart, stay safe with Safe Gauge today. Um, what about partnerships and expanding the company? Is that uh, are you at a point where you're able to start looking at that? What's what sort of your reach right now? Our reach it's it, it's it's growing quite rapidly actually. So we've we've done quite well here in Australia. Really excited to expand further into North America, South America. Um, we've got opportunities in in Africa, but um, our focus right now for the next six months is really establishing a, a key partner in uh, North America. We Spent some time in Salt Lake City, Utah. Um, we've got a, a multinational company that are really interested and really keen to be our distributor uh, for the North American market. Uh, and we're, that's our focus right now for the next six months. Then we'll move on to South America um, and, and other regions like Africa and, and Asia. How did you develop this now to st when you start scaling up then? I mean, I guess that it's also been a learning key. Now you're probably having to develop a team and and uh, all the, the steps that go within your company, the systems, putting systems in place. What, what's that learning curve been like? Yeah, it's, it's, been, uh, it's been a steep curve, learning curve, uh, but I've, I've got a great team and that's, you know, what makes Safe Gauge what it is, is, is our great team. And um, I've had a lot of help, uh, mentorship. We've got a, a board in place now as well um, with a lot of experience and expertise. And we've built a really quality team. We've got, um, our own in-house design team, uh, 14, 14 employees total now. Uh, nine of those are engineers working on um, improving existing products as well as developing new products, uh, new solutions, um, and, you know, great great culture uh, all around. And, and that's what makes SafeGage so, uh, so great, I believe. So, you're, oh, so you're, you've moved all the design in uh, in-house now? Yeah, so it's always always done in house. So Steve Chick, he's now our head engineer, oh, okay. uh, managing our engineering team. Uh, yeah, um, yeah, and I, I really focus on the safety element, of course. Uh, again, it's sort of a personal element to me for that. Um, but um, on that data collection side, can you walk through that? Because I, I saw some videos that it looked like there's that sort of live testing stuff. But then there's also like data collection. So can you kind of walk us, uh, just maybe clarify the live testing and then walk us through the uh, data collection side? Yeah, sure. So the live testing, we supply these kits, the rechargeable uh, tools that uh, are often put in service vehicles for the, the breakdown technicians, the workshop technicians uh, that do one-off tests. Uh, there's more of a live testing tool. Uh, there's not much uh, data storage on these devices, but we all also have the data link that can connect to more sensors, uh, stores that data on board as a complete offline device, uh, and then you can create reports and 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 um, adding graphs and and specs and tolerances and things and notes on those reports as well. So um, moving forward, we're moving to more towards a, a cloud-based solution mm. as well. So we'll be able to capture that data offline as well as push it to the cloud. 
Uh, and the ultimate goal here is being able to diagnose do these these data um, areas of the machines remotely uh, without having to send someone out to the field wow. at all. So um, that, that's the ultimate goal here in the next next 12 months. And so what are some of your other goals over the next, you know, what, what are some of the growth strategies, the plans that you have uh, moving forward? Of course, you, you mentioned the, you know, expanding to the U.S. market, South Africa, uh, Latin yeah. America. Uh, what, what sort of, are, are there other sort of developments or areas that you're focused on or, or partnerships you're looking to develop? Yeah, we're really excited for the North American market. So to sell and, and to um, assist our current market that we're working with here in Australia, the mining uh, resources sector, but also work closely with construction um, and potentially marine forestry and some other uh, industries that use heavy machinery as well that have the same problems as well um, and offering our solution to keep their workers safe. Um, so next 12, two years, uh, global expansion as well as uh, new sectors. and New and, sectors, uh, yeah. Yeah, very excited for that. Um, and then I, I guess I'll wrap up with, with this is, is going back. I mean, I, I, I'm going to circle back to the selling your house part because it's not, it's not <laughs> a small thing to just, I'm not going to, going to gloss over that. I mean, did you, before the idea came, I mean, did you plan on one day having a business? Was this something you aspired to or, or you just knew you had a good idea or believed you had a good idea and and it sort of just started going? Um, or, or did you kind of always have in your back of mind you're going to do something? Yeah, I always wanted to do something, to be honest. I always wanted uh, from a young age to have my own business uh, and, and to develop something special. And you know, I had the opportunity, I had an idea, um, and the team we've built has, have been able to make that happen. Um, it's, it's something that uh, it took a lot of risk to, to do, but mm. um, as I mentioned before, it's, it's definitely it was definitely worthwhile. Uh, what's it like being at uh, an event like this now, like a live event, getting to talk to people? Um, are, is it uh, does it sort of has it already opened up some doors going to these sort of live events and being right on the ground with people? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So we've got uh, four of our team members here, and we're, we've talked to a lot of people, um, learned a lot of things, uh, other technology that's being developed as well. It's it's amazing to see. Amazing. Being, People and companies that have, that have developed certain things over the last couple of years through COVID and through all the challenges that we've all gone through, it's, it's quite amazing. And uh, yeah, it's good to learn a lot about other companies, learn a lot about our customers um, and, uh, and see what else is out there as well. Yeah, it's, it's very exciting. I'm, you know, I, I love success. I love seeing people doing well. Of course, we have obviously these massive companies coming on the show. Um, but I come from the small yeah. business world, so I, I love seeing someone like you that just had an idea and was was willing to to do it, <laughs> just at every level. It's it's amazing, and it's what the industry needs. It needs people that are, you know, not just the big companies, which we also love, but it needs people that are thinking outside the box and implementing an idea and, and very a very specific uh, idea as well. Um, so it's great. So thanks, Luke, for coming on the show. Um, I certainly hope this is not the last time we get to sort of update the audience on, because uh, I, I can tell your company's going to do very well. Thank you very much, Jared, and thanks for having me on the show. Uh, I'm sure we'll talk soon. <laughs> I hope so. All right. Everybody, thank you very much. Uh, we'll put yeah, lots of links to, links to their, uh, to, the, to, um, to SafeGage, a very interesting company. And doing a great, like like I said, they're filling a very specific need, and that's the mining industry needs that, that people just see the need and, and actually fill it within the sector. So amazing, and, and we'll see them expanding into other uh, sectors as well. Thank you for watching. We will see you on the next episode of Mining Now.